All right, we've reviewed ramen and now it's time to go over the first Splatoon 1 returning map that isn't butchered. Let's talk about Bluefin Depot. Subscribe if you enjoy and let's get started. I'm skipping straight to zones for the sake of time. Turf War layout is worse. We've all seen it from the trailer that that right side is missing. Bluefin's S1 spawn was horrible for those who haven't seen the game. I mean, just look at this. It, it looks awful. This is definitely an improvement. My issue is just that they put it on one side. And honestly, this is an issue I have with Splatoon 3 spawns in general. There are so many maps where the spawn regions are just on one corner compared to the other that makes it easier to lock in there and more difficult to get to wider angles out of your base. And I feel like we could have made these spawn regions a lot more wide given the new super jump system. And yeah, this is one map where that's kind of felt because getting over to this left side does take substantially more time than just walking right side. That being said, it's still okay. You can still get to the left. Again, lack of defensive sponge, not great here. But that's really only a small complaint. These walls return and yeah, they're actually inkable. You can go around them, that's cool. And this block jump isn't as bad as I thought and it is kind of unique terrain to be able to poke up here if you're something like a blaster or a slosher. So you know what, not that bad. The elevator over here is pretty cool. As you can see, these bits light up when someone's going up it. So that's always a nice detail to be able to alert people. You can see it if you're not on this drop. I think the elevators are a very cool gimmick. I do like them and it gives you some unique options. My issue with them is that I think they're kind of slow. I think they should be like twice as fast to actually take you up because this makes this approach up here really, really predictable. It is very easy to tell when someone's coming up and be ready for it, and they do not have a lot of options once they get up here, unless they're playing something like a dually. You can paint the walls of the elevator, so that's nice. If someone's up there, you can follow them up. It is hard to paint, like, all of the wall because it drops very fast. I think the drop speed is fine. But yeah, if these raised a bit faster, I think that would make it a lot better. But it does contribute to a problem I'll get to later. Now, how Bluefin Zones works is pretty unique. The mid area is largely the same from Splatoon 1 outside of that gimmick. But we can see that these ramps were adjusted to be a little bit bigger and they're here more often. The zone on this map, when contested, starts to move into the middle of the map and when controlled, will move to the other team's side of the map, making it easier for them to contest. And then as it moves, this part of the terrain will rise back up looking like this. This is really, really cool. I love this zone gimmick. I think it is really fun, creative, and I really want to see more stuff like this. It's cool. And I think on Bluefin, a map that has a lot of lockout problems, you can have the zone consistently be in the spawn of the team defending to help out with that. Anyway, I think now would be a good time to talk about Bluefin's problems, one of which is approaching. In order to get out of mid, you have to either climb wall, and go on this very constricted side of the map where at least you can make this jump, but it's still very predictable. Or two, go on these elevators, which while they are cool, it's very slow and very predictable and very easy to punish. You do have a wide route to be able to go up, which is where it gets a lot easier. You can do this long flank, but there's not really any way to get up here quickly and that causes a lot more problems as we'll get to later. The ramps do help a lot though, it makes it very easy to switch between sides, but given that it's pretty easy to get in mid and very hard to get out of mid, these bluefin is susceptible to pinch. If you have a lot of people sitting in this kind of zone area, you can get pinned really easily. You can have people dropping from here, from here, from the ramp, sometimes this is open through mid, and it's very easy to kind of get cornered in mid. At the same time, it's really hard to get out of that situation because, again, being able to get out of mid is really difficult. The best thing I can say about it is the split mid does leave it to where your team can be split up a bit. For example, you could have a defensive weapon sitting here in zones in a much more difficult spot to reach, but that could pose its own problems where, wow, approaching this spot is actually really hard because they just drop into charger laser and there's not a lot of cover. And then if it's ever really bad for the charger, they just go away and they're up here. So there's a lot of terrain problems that from replaying this map do lead to some unfortunate circumstances. Is it enough to make the map really bad? To me, no. To a lot of other competitive players, yes. You know, compared to some of the other stuff Splatoon 3 has, this ain't that bad. 
Now, to clarify some changes I want to the mode. One, I think this should rise up way faster because you can see it takes forever and whenever this is not up, this area basically has no cover since this is really the main thing protecting you from long range. I would really like it if there was a lower bridge that existed when the zone moved because it's kind of annoying that you can't cross this as easily as compared to the other modes since you really only have this flank ramp there. And then again, the main things, I've mentioned the elevator over and over, but another big one would be this wall being paintable on this side. In Splatoon 1, it was paintable on all sides, even the back, which was cool for stuff like hide and seek. But here, if you could climb this wall, especially since it's a bit bigger, on this side, you would be able to be much more stealthy, whereas now, you climb the wall and you're very exposed. Those changes would do a lot, personally, in my opinion, on all the modes, but especially in zones where this kind of pinch is felt, I think those are some of the bigger changes the map could get. Potentially even changing this area a bit so it's a bit more useful as cover, though I don't think it's that bad an issue. So Bluefin Tower is actually the first time since Splatoon 1 we have seen the return of the really tall tower. This was a thing in like TC Flounder and a few places in S1, and this is the very first time it's come back. So yeah, tall tower fans, you are winning. You do have a unique tower jump you can do here. And the tower moves toward the enemy base, which is nice. I think the first checkpoint is okay. This block having this much being uninkable is horrible. People have already posted about it. Once you get up here, you can make jumps to this top area, which while it is cool, it is again, pop a crab up here, pop a zooka, pop a jetpack up here. And the game's basically over for the defenders who are on the low ground. The tower does go over water here, but it's not by that much, so it's not that big a deal, all things considered. And I think the rest of this tower path is fine. It's whatever, really. I just think that it is very attacker-favored, all things considered. The block area here is really annoying. This right side, as you can see, has a root removed. On to Rainmaker, where we do have some steps being added here. And on the other side, a little bit of a ramp, which is pretty cool. Say I'm a fan of this. It's pretty neat to open up the map, block being replaced by this pedestal. And a lot of people have been talking about, damn, this pedestal is way closer than this pedestal. And yeah, this is much better if you're getting a checkpoint right away. This is one of the first Rainmaker maps that I think honestly has two really good split routes. And it's really easy to break away. Say you're like standing here, maybe you just got the checkpoint. Or like, I don't know, maybe it's in mid to be more accurate. I don't know if you'll do this with the ramp. But you're in mid, the other team's stacking left side because they're ready for you to climb this wall. And then boom, you run away. You have a teammate painting for you, so it's not actually this slow. You paint this wall, you get up here, you shoot in front, you do this jump over here and don't mess it up. You run across here and break away on the ramp. Meanwhile, the defending team has it being a lot slower because they're like, oh crap, they're going around. They gotta ride the slow elevator up. They gotta go over here. They have to jump around. They have to jump over here. They have to jump across here, which you could do if you're not holding the Rainmaker, all the way to get back. It's an actual breakaway. And this route is really cool because I think this is a much more advantageous like rest of the route. If you can get the rain up here, it is really nice to be able to push the rest of the way, but obviously it's way, way slower and way wider of a route. It's very cool depth that I really enjoy. And the main route is, you know, fine if you can get up here, which is still very difficult, especially given you're holding the Rainmaker. This route is still totally functional, and this being steps makes it as slow as it needs to be. So, yeah. I actually say I like Bluefin Rainmaker quite a bit more than most of the other modes. Zones is really the only one that's close to it, and I think that this breakaway route with the objective, being able to take the objective on this flank and get behind is something this map really needs to open it up. And this is the only map where you can do that. In Bluefin Clams, this ramp is gone for some reason. I don't know why, it would have been really nice. Bluefin Clams has a big problem, at least in more competitive play, maybe in solo it's a bit different with how big the map is, which is uh, pushing on this map is very, very difficult, if not impossible a lot of the time. Again, every push you have is predictable. Now add on top of it that you have a power clam locating you. You have to go up this and then roll in. You have to go around this left side or you have to go on this super wide angle, which would be fine if you can get all the way around and push that way, but you can't. You have to go over here and then score from here, which is a lot worse. Outside of that, there's not really much differences with the map other than... I... Wait. But why though? Like, I guess you can put a jetpack up here or a caster to it, but you could also 
caster over the bridge and across the map. So, like, I, 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 okay. I will say real quick, I've been very critical of Bluefin. I want to point out, I think the devs did a good job making the stage more fun. I think it's still probably a bit better than Splatoon 1. I think the elevator is a cool gimmick. I think the moving zone is a cool gimmick. I like the extra jumps they've added. I like the more open routes in mid. Honestly, outside of the spawn region, I think they did positive changes overall, and that's worth noting. I do think the layout of the map, especially as I've gotten more used to it now, rather than many, many years ago, is something where I'm like, yeah, I can see this falling apart a lot more in competitive play, especially with how much better the scene has gotten. I can see a lot more places this map would fall apart, which sucks, but it is what it is. And you know what? I don't even really care that much. The fact that it's as fun as it is and has unique gimmicks and keeps its identity intact makes me care a lot less about how well it works competitively, which is really cool. So hopefully, if future stages don't work, they'll at least be fun like this one is. And that's everything I have to say, but what do you think about Bluefin Depot? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you all next time.